welcome back to me in an echoey room recording stuff I learned in the house of bamboo. Since the last episode, it's fair to say it's been an emotional roller coaster. I gained 10 subscribers and got three dislikes. And that got me thinking, what's behind these highs and lows? Turns out it's the brain. The brain is a hugely organized lump of cells. Within this lump, neurons with related functions are clumped together into regions. Different regions do different things. The clumped neurons send off axonal projections, with those going in the same direction, merging into fiber tracts. These tracts are covered in fatty myelin, so look white, and are referred to as white matter. This white matter is what allows all the different brain regions to communicate with each other. You have 850,000 kilometers of neurons in your head, enough to go around the world 133 times. In fact, if you stretched out all of your DNA, it would be about twice the diameter of the solar system. Just let that sink in. Now, the brain is quite possibly one of the most complex bits of biology in the world. So in the 1960s, some dude called Paul McLean was like, screw this. Let's break them into three layers. Paul, are those literal layers? Metaphorical, my man. What are you going to call the model, Paul? The triune brain. This is layer one. Hello. The most ancient part. It's found at the brain's base, from geckos to humans, and it's responsible for all the automatic stuff you're not thinking about. Your neurons tell you you're feeling cold. Shiver. Low glucose. Hungry. Take a bullhorn to the testicles. Yep, my lucky day. Ouch. <laughs> when it comes to automatic stuff... I'm in charge. Layer 2 evolved more recently. <laughs> and is larger in mammals. This is where emotions come in. Layer 2 loves to influence Layer 1. Let's say you see something scary. Hey. We're scared. Adrenaline. <laughs> Maybe you feel sad and unloved. Nobody loves us. Um, hungry? That's why you stuff your face with ice cream when you get dumped. Then finally we've arrived at layer three. Greetings. The neocortex. This is the most recently evolved part of the brain and is larger in primates. It's responsible for cognition, sensory processing, abstraction, philosophy. We get it, you're a smart cookie. A very smart cookie. Layer 3 means you can just think about something you don't like. Make layer 2 disgusted, then layer 1 will make you shudder. Unfortunately, Homer's too stupid for this, so we'll have to use Lionel Hutz. Well, I just want a bit of pudding. Pudding? Yeah. Sex pudding. Oh! Sex pudding. The power of the mind. If we're thinking about highs and lows, we're in the realm of emotions. So let's talk about layer 2. In the early 20th century, scientists chopped open a rat's head. Hmm. What are these? Could they be brain testicles? Shut up, Barry. They were olfactory bulbs, one for each nostril, and they sent their first axonal projections to layer two. Ah, this must be where smells are processed. What should we call it? How about rhinocephalon? It means nose brain in Greek. Why does everything have to be in Greek with you, Barry? In the 30s and 40s, scientists were beginning to figure out what layer two structures did. When lesioned or destroyed, subjects would become socially abnormal, especially regarding sex and aggression. Conclusion, layer two deals with emotion and is called the limbic system. This didn't go down well with the nose brainers. Nose brain. Limbic system. Nose brain. Limbic system, until someone pointed out the obvious. For rats, emotions and smells go hand in hand. So what they smell is what the limbic system is most dependent on for emotional updates. Primates, on the other hand, are more visual. There seems to be a correlation between gaining color vision and depending less on your nose. And so it was settled. The limbic system is central to emotions. But how? Okay, there's this thing in the brain called the hypothalamus. The hypothalamus is an interface between layer one and layer two. All the other limbic structures want to influence the hypothalamus because it can turn your emotions into a physical response. It's how your feelings become real. So the hypothalamus gets lots of signals from layer two, but sends most of its projections to layer one. This ancient base of the brain has been evolving for over 500 million years, since the earliest vertebrates. Hello. It's responsible for regulating all the automatic stuff going on in your body right now. Go for a run. Your muscles work hard. 
neuron signal layer one saying they need more oxygen. Layer one sends a signal back down the spine saying increase the heart rate. We call this automatic system of the brain stem and all of its projections to organs and glands the autonomic nervous system. The hypothalamus provides the link between the limbic system and your autonomic function. The autonomic nervous system is split into two parts the sympathetic nervous system and the parasympathetic nervous system. The sympathetic nervous system controls your bodily response to arousing stimuli. Think the four F's. Fear, flight, fight and um, sex. It mainly releases the neurotransmitter noradrenaline at its terminals, apart from at the adrenal gland where it releases adrenaline. If the sympathetic nervous system is a can of Red Bull, the parasympathetic nervous system is a warm cup of cocoa. Sympathetic, intense. Parasympathetic, chilled. Sympathetic, speeds heart up. Parasympathetic, slows it down. Parasympathetic, promotes digestion. Sympathetic, turns it off. But why stop digestion? Because if you're getting chased by an angry beaver, you don't want to be wasting energy digesting that delicious croissant you had for breakfast. I don't even like croissant. The parasympathetic nervous system is central to everything you love. Resting, regenerating, feeding, and breeding. And the neurotransmitter that makes it all happen acetylcholine. So the limbic system can affect the autonomic nervous system through the hypothalamus. This is why you get that nervous feeling during a speech. The limbic system tells layer 1 you're stressed, and layer 1 tells the autonomic nervous system to turn off digestion, leading to a nasty case of dry mouth. Nice. The hypothalamus also releases a bunch of hormones that we won't go into right now. So that's how your limbic system links up with layer 1. We did it guys. We made it. Um, what, what about layer three? What about it? Uh, d does that not have a link to the limbic system? Ugh, fine. This is the cortex, the mysterious logical jewel of layer three, the most recently evolved part of the brain. The cortex commands muscles to move, comprehends and produces language, stores memories, and the list goes on. This is your executive director, but it's not a dictator. It can still be influenced by the limbic system due to the bi-directional projections. Time for a weird fact. Weird fact time! A stroke can cause damage to the cortical region for speech. Sometimes the victim can reroute their cerebral world for speech through limbic detours, meaning they can no longer speak, but they can sing. Between layers 1 and 2, you've got the hypothalamus. Between layers 2 and 3, the frontal lobe acts as a link. In the 1960s, neuroscientist Vol Norter was studying what brain regions were sending axons to and receiving axons from the frontal cortex. He found that it was bidirectionally fused with the limbic system. Vol said, The frontal cortex is a quasi-member of the limbic system. This seemed strange. The frontal cortex had come around about 50 million years after the limbic system. But Norta was right. Depending on the situation, the frontal cortex and limbic system stimulate or inhibit each other, collaborate, coordinate, bicker. They're an old married couple. And like an old married couple, I've forgotten the point of this video. Oh yeah, emotions. Anyway, let's have some closing thoughts from Master Yoda. I sense much fear in you. Stop reading my limbic system, Yoda.